Hi, uh, this is uh, Mrs. Fitzpatrick. I'm going to make a quick uh, math video about place value charts and borrowing and bundling. So we're going to start out with a problem that was on a recent test. So this is always good uh, to know in advance what you're going to be tested on. And the direction said to do the problem vertically and then solve using the place value method. And so most of us know how to set up the problem vertically. In fact, this, uh, this is easy for a lot of people because it's the most common way that we've learned. So we set, set up the problem vertically. And then of course, we're going to add these together. Now, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and show how we do this with place value. So I've got my chart. I've got my 100s. I've got my 10s and my 1s right there. So um, we're going to start out. The first thing that we need to do is we need to load up our place value chart with 87. So what we're going to do is here's the tens placement. So, you know, the 80 part. So we're going to go ahead and add eight tens. Because anytime we see eight tens, we need to think, oh, 880. So, and then seven ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have our seven ones. And then, so we're going to add, so it would be really smart for me to change pen color right now. Let's see what I have handy. Oh, now you'd think I would have planned for this. One moment. There we go, here's a red. So now we're going to add our 56. So I found a beautiful magenta. So now we're going to populate our placement chart with five tens, which is pretty much just 50, four, five, and six ones. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So now we've added these together. So now you can see them all. But, you know, as soon as you have more than nine of anything, it becomes a 10. So if we have more than nine ones, we're going to have to do something called bundling. So we're going to have to move 10 of these over to the tens. Because once you have more than nine ones, it's, it's, it's not a one anymore, it's a 10. So here's how we do this. We're going to go ahead, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're going to take these ten and we're going to move it over there and create a new little ten. And what we've got left is one, two, three. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a three there. Now we have the same problem here. Look at that. We've got probably more than ten tens here. So we're going to do some more bundling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So once again, we're going to take these tens and we're going to move them over here. So now we have that those ten tens become one hundred. And so what do we have left behind? One, two, three, four. And then of course we have one one hundred right there. So believe it or not, our answer is one forty three. So now let's see if that's the case right here. So, um, so now when we added the seven and the six initially, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's what we started out with right over here. And then we added six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and six, all this all together was 13. So if this, so we're, if we were doing this, we'd put 13 and then we'd carry the one, now if we did uh, new groups below, we'd stick the one down there, but whatever. So nine, so eight and five is 13, plus one more is 14. And the answer is of course, 143. And of course we should get the same answer. So there we go. I'm gonna show this problem set one other way. And we're really, we haven't gotten to this point yet because I don't think that we'll be exploring money until later. But frankly, I think looking at this with money is going to make a whole lot more sense to family. 
uh, to parents. And so, so again, let's say we start out with 87 cents. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I got 8, 80 cents right there. In fact, let me move this up a little bit so we can see it. So I've got 80 cents there. And the problem, I'm going to write the problem down a little bit lower so we can see it. The initial problem was 86 plus 56. So we have 80, and now I'm going to go ahead and put 7 pennies. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I've got my 87 cents in there. And then I'm going to add 56 cents. So I'm going to take my pennies. So, you know, again, here was our 87 cents. Now I'm going to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cents. And then now I need to add my 50 cents. So, of course, I'm going to add some more dimes. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. So right now we have 87 cents and 56 cents in here, but we have a lot of pennies. So in order to represent this, we're going to have to bundle our pennies into a dime. So I'm going to stack these up. Let's see. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to take my 10 pennies and I'm going to trade them in for a shiny dime. But of course, I'm going to stick them in here with the dimes because they don't belong in the cents. So I just cashed that in and I've got three pennies left. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the dimes because 10 dimes makes a dollar. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here I've got my ten dimes and I'm going to trade them in for a shiny dollar coin. So I'm going to put my dollar coin there. So what we see now, it's again, it's the same problem. We see we've got our one dollar, we've got our 40 cents, and our or 40, we've got our 40 tens, which is 40, and then 3 cents. Again, giving us 143, or as we know it, $1.43. So uh, that's just another way to look at it. So again, you know, we're not, you know, when we went, so with the place value chart, what we're doing is we're showing visually what it means to carry 10 over 10 ones into the tens, which is pretty much what we did when we added this one here. In other words, we, we took our 13 and we dropped the three and then we carried 10 of the 13 into the tens placement, which is what visually happened here. You know, in other words, or when we at, took the 10, 10 ones and moved them over there. And then once again, you know, we also took the 10 tens and moved them over here to get that hundred. Because as you can see, we didn't start out with any hundreds. You know, the what happened was, is we added these together, we got 14. So we had to take our 10 tens and move them over into the hundreds, which is how we got the 143. So again, that is an example of bundling uh, next, we're going to do a quick example of borrowing. Okay, in order to borrow, I'm going to take a similar problem. I'm going to say 81 minus, and I'll say 59, because then this will put us in the position where we have to borrow. So again, here's our placement chart, um, 100 tens ones. We're going to set the problem up vertically. And of course, you can't take nine from one. So if we were to input our values into the chart, 
it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And 1, there's 81. Now I'm going to subtract 59, but lo, I can't do that. I can't take 9 from 1, so I'm going to have to unbundle one of my 10s, right, and move them over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now I've got 11, and I'm in a better position to subtract 9. So, you know, that's, so we've unbundled that. So same thing over here. 1, so what we did was we took one of the 10, so we, we knocked 8 down to 7, which is what we did here, because now we just have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we gave... 10 to this, so they have 11 now. So what we're seeing here is exactly what we see over here. We see 11 ones, we see seven tens. And now we're in the position to subtract. So we're gonna start subtracting 59. This is what it looks like. So first I'm gonna take away the nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And how many do I have left? I have two. And now I'm going to subtract the 50, so let, or you know, the 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's it. And I've got 2 left here as well. So that leaves us with 22. Let's see if that's what we got over here. 11 minus 9 is 2. And 7 minus 5 is 2. So, like it did before, those two numbers match. In our chart, what it looks like is we can see what, what had to be, you know, subtracted, but we also had to see a little bit of unbundling happen, again, to be in the position to subtract 9 from 1. That's why we needed to do, again, what we call, um, you know, we call it borrowing, you know, which is what, what we really did. But in this sense, it was really unbundling, you know, because we took one of these tens and created 10. So it would be like taking a dime and cashing it out for 10 pennies. So anyway, I hope um, this is just two examples. I can obviously provide some more examples if we need to. Um, but uh, let me know if uh, this, this helped you uh, in terms of understanding placement value charts, and what uh, bundling and unbundling looks like, uh, you know, compared to the vertical problem set. Thank you.